Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Milkovich. I'm a science system engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory here in Pasadena, California. Let me start by explaining what that is. Uh, so we have a fleet of robots out exploring the whole solar system and every spacecraft team has a science team and an engineering team and the scientists want to get the best possible science data and the engineers want to keep the spacecraft happy and healthy and these two goals don't always go hand in hand so my job is to translate between the scientists I'm supposed to go from the scientists to the engineers and explain what the scientists want to do and then explain go back from the engineers back to the scientists and explain well here's the real world of what the engineering can do and so by working together and by being a bridge between these two groups um, I help us get the best possible science data within our engineering constraints um, I got into this I what led me here was a childhood love of um, both geology I loved how you could look at the rocks that you set that you see somewhere and it, you could figure out a whole history of what had happened in this area it was like a puzzle and a mystery uh, all in a different language with bits missing and you pull that all together to to tell the story of a place. Um, I also loved astronomy, uh, finding out about stars, going stargazing, uh, and especially uh, learning about spacecraft that were out uh, at Mars or flying through the outer solar system. The Voyager spacecraft had some flybys of I think it was Neptune uh, when I was little and I remember uh, watching specials, science specials about them and being fascinated by this group of people who were sitting in a room looking at the images coming back and these were pictures of some place so far away. No human had ever seen it and it took light over an hour to get here from there and I just wanted to be in that room. So I ultimately I went and got my uh, bachelor's degree in planetary science and, at Caltech and I went to Brown University for graduate school. I went and got my master's and PhD in planetary geology. My research specialty was looking at ice on Mars and where is it and what does it look like and trying to figure out what can that tell us about the Martian climate over the last several hundred million years. Uh, and I came out to Pasadena to JPL as a research postdoc to continue that research, but ultimately, uh, you know, it was the spacecraft that got me into the field and that was where my love really was. And so I became an employee in this sort of bridge building science system engineering world. I've worked on the operations team for Mars Phoenix, which landed in the Arctic plains of Mars, uh, for Cassini, which is out exploring the Saturn system, the planet, its rings, its moons, um, and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which is an orbit around Mars. I specifically worked for the HiRISE team. HiRISE is a camera on, on MRO, and it's my favorite camera in the whole solar system. It takes these really fantastic images of the surface of Mars in color and in 3D and you can just take your 3D glasses and go to their website and and look at some really beautiful pictures uh, of, of Mars. It's really revolutionized how we see Mars. Um, I worked for a while on the Curiosity rover and now what I'm doing is I'm working for the Mars 2020 rover. This is our next rover to Mars and what I'm doing is I'm taking all of the lessons that I've learned and all the experiences I've had about operating different kinds of spacecraft and I'm using those on a team where we are figuring out how are we going to operate our next rover. Uh, so we have some ideas about big changes we want to make and some ideas about all the things we want to keep the same 
and uh, it's it's going to be very exciting to hopefully in 2021 when we land on Mars and put all of these ideas in practice to to see how it comes out was were they good ideas are we getting great science uh, so so that's something I'm you know really looking forward to uh, I love this job not only because I get to tell robots what to do, and I remember on the first time I had a sequence running on Cassini, I went out and looked up at the sky. I figured out where Saturn was supposed to be, um, and because I live in Los Angeles, so I didn't actually see Saturn itself. I just knew that was the right part of the sky. Um, and I thought, there's a robot out there that's doing what I told it to do, and that's a very nice feeling. Um, but What's especially compelling about being part of these teams is they are, uh, it's a big team. It's a large group of people coming together. Um, it's an international group of people coming together. Most of the projects I've worked on have had some portion, maybe it's an instrument, maybe it's several instruments um, that were built by another country and we work together on how to operate it. So it really feels like it's the whole, it's all of humanity coming together to reach out beyond our planet. And, and that is an amazing feeling. Um, I think it's very important to have that wide group, have a diverse group uh, in terms of gender and in terms of ethnicities or cultural backgrounds to come together to work on these sorts of projects because the more diverse the experiences and the perspectives of the people at the table and the ideas that they bring forward, the better the ultimate solution that you find for any problem is going to be. Uh, so that's, uh, that's something that's very important to me. Um, I wanted to give a couple messages to any young people who may end up watching this. Um, one is that there's, I feel like there's sort of a, uh, in our culture, we like to portray a line between science, math, and engineering, and art, and that there there's uh, that your brain either works for one or it works for the other and that artists are free thinkers and really creative and that you know engineers or scientists are very rigid which is not the case at all to be a good scientist or a good engineer you need a lot of creativity to come up with creative solutions to your problems um you so there's no either or. It all works together. Um, and every one of my coworkers, who are all just really smart people, really, uh, really uh, creative people, and they also, all of us in our spare time, were musicians or artists or photographers, uh, you know, arts and crafts, crafter types, um, woodworkers. There's all sorts of people. So you don't have to choose between creativity and engineering, they go hand in hand. Uh, and then the other message I wanted to send um, was if you're interested in, as you go through life and as challenges or opportunities come your way and they seem frightening, don't let that stop you. Don't let uh, don't don't let you, any belief of yours that you don't have the right skills keep you from chasing an opportunity that sounds interesting. Um, when I was little, I was incredibly shy. I did not want to talk at all in class. I didn't because I didn't want to be wrong about something, and I didn't want people looking at me. I just didn't want to speak. Um, ultimately, for my last two years of high school, I went to a school where you had to participate in class. There was a big emphasis on class participation. And as part of that, I learned to speak up and I learned that I have things to say. And even if those things aren't always correct, 
by engaging in the conversation and participating, I help the whole group arrive at a better destination. Um, so, and now my job, I have to do a lot of talking and I have to be able to at any moment stand up and talk about what I've been thinking about um, or give my opinion on what somebody else has been thinking about. Uh, so uh, I had early on realized that I wanted to be part of this exploration of the solar system so much that I wasn't going to let myself stand in my own way. And uh, that, that decision, although it's, it's you know, painful at times, to, you, you learn how to do these things that frighten you at first, and then they're no longer frightening. Um, and so that has served me very well, and uh, so, so I just wanted to, to pass that on. Um, so thank you very much to Patty uh, and, and the Women That Amaze site for, for inviting me to, uh, to talk to you today. Thank you.